All right, everybody, welcome to the fifth lecture video, and it's actually going to be our second last lecture video for chapter four. And finally, we're going to have a lecture video where we can actually talk about something other than just income statements. I know income statements have been dragging on forever, but finally, it's over now. We can focus on an entirely new statement, the statement of retained earnings. And luckily for you guys, it's not nearly as long as the income statement. However, it can be a little bit technical, but don't worry, you know, I'll guide you through it and it'll be super easy by the end of it, okay? So retained earnings, what is it? Retained earnings is simply just a shareholder's equity account. So the statement of retained earnings, all it's really doing is just showcasing all of the activity that happened in the account for the entire year. So basically, the statement of retained earnings is just gonna highlight everything that you know made the account go up and everything that you know made the account go down. It's showcasing all the different things that happened to the retained earnings account for that year. So, simple concept here. So it's not that long of a statement, right? It's a very brief overview of what happened to retained earnings. So I feel like the best way to go about explaining this to you guys is to just show you the most complicated possible form of a retained earnings statement that you'll ever have to face in this course. And what we'll do is we'll just go, you know, through line by line and it'll explain, you know, why each item is there and how it is calculated. That way, you know, by showing you the most complicated statement here, when you go and practice on your own and when you, you know, see on the midterm, you'll never, you know, have a statement or a question that will be more complicated than the statement I'm about to show you now. Okay, fair enough. So this is the statement right here. As you can see, it's not very long at all. In fact, it's very short. There's only a few steps here that we're gonna have to go through and talk about. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So the first step, as always, you know, of course you're gonna put in your header, company name, statement kind, and the year. But a first actual step to prepare the statement is gonna be to list our beginning balance for the year for retained earnings. In this case, you know, the start of the year was January 1st and retained earnings was valued at $560,000. This amount is always gonna be given to you right in the question, so all you need to know for step one is just to start off the statement with the beginning balance of retained earnings. Second step here, and this is where it starts to get a little bit technical, okay? We're gonna list any retrospective adjustments or correction in errors that we found for the year. Okay, so it gets a little bit complicated here. So in this year, we found a retrospective adjustment for change in inventory for you know a loss of $124,000 and a correction for depreciation error for $29,000. Now, of course you're wondering, why are these you know correction of errors and adjustments even presented on the statement? What's the point? Okay, so this is, bear with me here, this is where it gets a little bit technical, right? And this is, I'm gonna try to explain the background for this for you very clearly. So what you need to understand is two things. First thing is that there are two kinds of accounts in accounting, permanent accounts and temporary accounts. Permanent accounts are things like assets, liabilities, and shareholders equity. They are there for the whole year and they are never closed off. Whereas temporary accounts, things like revenues and expenses, are closed off. You may remember the term closing entries because, you know, as temporary accounts, they are only existent for one year and then at the end, we close them off. You know, where do we close them off to? Retained earnings. So as you can see, retained earnings encapsulates a lot of information. In fact, it encapsulates all the revenues and expenses from, you know, all of the prior years that the company's been in existence. But the thing you need to understand, right, the second thing you need to understand is that accountants make mistakes, okay? And we make mistakes a lot. And in fact, those mistakes sometimes aren't even discovered for, you know, years to come. So in this example right here, we had a correction for depreciation expense for $29,000. So we're in 2015. Let's say the accountant discovers, oh, hey, we actually misvalued our depreciation for $29,000 back in, you know, 2010, right? They discover this error. The thing is though, is that 
depreciation expense, it's a temporary account. It's closed off every single year. So in order to fix this mistake, the accountant can't just go back to the 2010 depreciation expense account and you know, up it by $29,000 because you know, the account doesn't exist anymore because it is temporary. But the account was closed off to retained earnings. So the only way to fix that mistake is to go into retained earnings and to adjust it right then and there. And that is why in the second step of the statement of retained earnings, we do our retrospective adjustments and we do a correction of errors. So that's why we have a retrospective adjustment for change in inventory of $124,000 loss and our correction for depreciation error of $29,000. Okay, fortunately, that big explanation I, uh, I just gave you right there, you don't actually need to know it. You know, in fact, you, in order to get through this course, you can just memorize the fact that, okay, step one is begin and balance for retained earnings, and step two is just list in any errors and adjustments, because they're never gonna make you calculate these errors and adjustments. You just simply need to know where to plug it in on the statement, okay? So as long as you wanna memorize that fact that step two is adjustments and changes and errors, then that's fine, you can get through it. But I just figured, you know, I'll provide some you know, background for it for those students who, you know, would like to know where the information is coming from. One last thing though I wanna talk about about step two here is that notice how the retrospective adjustments and the changes in errors a recorded net of tax, okay? So for those who don't know, I talked about net of tax in lecture three if you don't know how to calculate it yourself, all right? So recap of step two here, just list your retrospective adjustments and changes in errors, net of tax, all right? After that, the statement becomes very simplistic. The third step here is just to calculate our adjusted beginning balance by taking our beginning balance of $560,000 and then adding and subtracting any you know, changes and errors and retrospective adjustments we made above in step two. So to figure out our adjusted balance of $465,000, we're just gonna take our beginning balance of $560,000, subtract the $124,000 loss from a retrospective adjustment and changes in inventory, and then add our $29,000 correction for depreciation error. The fourth step here is to add or subtract, you know, our net income or net loss. Remember how I told you that revenues and expenses are closed off to retained earnings? Well, the net effect of actually, you know, closing off all of our revenues to retained earnings and then closing off all of our expenses is the same thing as if we were to just, you know, add or subtract our net income or net loss to the retained earnings account. So rather than adding up all of our revenues and then subtracting all of our expenses again on the statement of retained earnings, we summarize it a lot and we just showed the net income or net loss because we've already showed the revenues and expenses in the income statement. So stakeholders don't need you know, to look at all that information again on the statement of retained earnings. So we summarize it a lot and for step four, all we're doing here is adding the net income or subtracting the net loss, whatever we have for that year. In this case, we had a net income of $167,000, so we're gonna add that to our beginning adjusted balance. The fifth step is to subtract any dividends paid for the year. Dividends paid has the effect of decreasing our retained earnings account, therefore we subtract it from our adjusted beginning balance for retained earnings. Makes sense, right? And I want you to note that it's not only cash dividends that can decrease retained earnings, but also stock dividends. We had stock dividends here of, along with our cash dividends of $76,800. Now one thing I want you to note here is that it's not only dividends paid that decreases retained earnings, but it's also dividends declared. So if the question says that the cash dividends weren't paid but declared, well, they're still going to be deducted on the statement of retained earnings because, you know, for accounting purposes, it does the same thing. Dividends paid and dividends declared both decrease the retained earnings account. Therefore, we deduct them on the statement of retained earnings. And then our last step here is just to figure out what our ending balance was on December 31st for retained earnings. And we're going to do that by, you know, taking our adjusted beginning balance of $465,000 Add in our net income of $167,000, subtract in our cash dividends 
of $76,800 and also subtract in our stock dividends of $41,000. This gives us an ending balance of retained earnings of $514,200. And that's it. That's the end of the statement and that's all you have to do. Only six steps really to complete it, rather short, rather simple. However, there's a few technical steps in there that you know may catch you off guard, such as you know recording the errors at the top and knowing that you know when you deduct dividends, they can be dividends paid and dividends declared. But if you keep note of these things, this statement is going to be a breeze for you, okay? But I just want you to note though that just because this statement is short doesn't mean that they don't ask you it a lot on the midterm. I see it asked a lot of times, so make sure that you know it, okay? So see you at the next video.